Today I'm sharing designs to my DIY spot welder which is made 100% with a 3D printer, other than the electronics of course. I designed this model which is made of just 4 simple 3D printable parts. My main focus was to make this compact for easy storage and transportation. I then printed all of these parts on Micreality and longer 3D printers as these companies sponsored the making of this video. I'll take a second to recommend these CR6 and LK5 models to anyone looking for good quality at an affordable price. After the 4 parts were printed, we purchased other parts from McMaster Car, which we have listed in the description. Lastly, we have this power transformer that we took out of a microwave, which we purchased on Craigslist for just $10. We bought a broken microwave and you can do the same. So let's get started. Assembling these 3D printed parts is really easy. They push in together like a perfect puzzle. Check it out. Once you put them in, they're stuck together. That being said, we still want to attach them together with screws right in these holes. To add metal threads into a 3D print, you want to use these metal inserts which only require a soldering iron to install. The way these work is quite simple. They have grooves on the outside of them and metal threads on the inside. When you heat them up and press them into plastic, it melts and hardens around the grooves, holding the metal threads very rigidly in place. So let's get into the fun part and assemble all the components now. I'll challenge you here to guess who's the baby brother, Dave or Alan? The outcome looks promising, so just before we move on, here's a lesson from the smarter brother. Let me explain to you the physics behind this spot welder. At the heart of it, we have a transformer and simply put, what this does is takes in an input voltage and changes it to a different one. And this new voltage is determined by the ratio between these two coils. What we're doing today is changing one of these coils with a much thicker wire. And this will allow us to drive up the current, which is exactly what we need for this spot welder. Well, you heard the boss, let's get started. Now right here, it's super important that you take a moment to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Thanks for helping out our channel. Here, you simply need to connect the 110 volt AC into the primary coil in order to get that low voltage and high current in the new secondary coil. We ran the 110 volts through a light bulb and a switch, but it's up to you to perform the electrical work in a safe and appropriate manner if you decide to build a similar contraption. Speaking of which, we connect these adapters to our secondary coil, which allow us to easily place and replace the welding electrodes. Here we are installing steel electrodes, which are essentially just pointed nails, but you should ideally opt for copper instead. This is because copper dissipates heat very quickly and will therefore not melt nor stick as easily as the steel electrode will. Alright, there it is. This PLA plastic really gives it a nice metallic shine. So our first use case for this is going to be with a ruler. Imagine if one day you have a ruler and you break it. Oh no, you need to fix this now. Luckily this is no longer a major issue in your life because you have the Action Box Spot Welder. And there it is. Let's just break it off the electrode and your ruler is like it's brand new. All right, well, we couldn't be happier with how this machine is performing. It fixes rulers extremely well. Check it out. If I tried to sell this, I doubt anyone would know it was ever broken. Moving on, if you're looking for a parts list, make sure to check out our website and we'll see you back here next time at the Action Box.